Good morning, my name is Angie Alonso. Uh, my name is Adriana Larios, and uh, today our topic is going to be about the war after the war. So the thing that we chose to focus on is causes that are worth dying for. And everyone has a cause that they, you know, are willing to die for, so whether it's family or a loved one or anything. We chose to focus on veterans and what they believe is worth dying for and then how they come back and how it affects them. And the dictionary definition of a veteran is a person who has had long experience in a particular field and a person who has served in the military. We'll be focusing on the person who has served in the military. So the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs is a program in which it um, provides services for these veterans. Um, they have stated their mission statements since 1865 when President Lincoln was in office. And his promise was to care for him who shall have become the um, who shall, who shall have borne the battle for his widow and his orphans by serving and honoring the men and women who are America's veterans. So um, the Department of Veteran Affairs receives around $3 billion a year in order to provide these services. And our question is, are they doing enough? Um, or are they providing enough for these veterans? Uh, so in the, in the military, like veteran um, soldiers have to like be alert 24-7 like in combat. And combat is fighting between two armed forces or taking action to reduce, destroy, or prevent something that is undesirable. And it's different than like in a civilian life because when you're like here, you can just kind of go with your day. But when you're in combat, you have to be um, aware of your surroundings 24-7 and sometimes you kind of just see um, traumatic like situations. And so from combat, sometimes um, soldiers come back with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder which is a mental health condition that is triggered by um, traumatic events. And also, like, you can kind of know that they come back with PTSD if they come back with flashback nightmares or severe um, anxiety. So this graph shows the impact of military injuries. And then they're split upon two groups, so those who were seriously injured and those who were not seriously injured. <coughs> and then the first one is those who suffer from PTSD. And you see how 47 say that they're seriously injured, while 16% say that they're not seriously injured. So either way, they still get affected. And then you see how there's a big amount of people who suffer from these nightmares and from all of the things that they've been through. And there's those who have difficulty, difficulty readjusting to civilian life. And then 54% say that they're seriously injured, while 24% say that they're not seriously injured. And as you see here, the, the this percent is the one that's the most. So for veterans, out of 22 million veterans, um, 69 say that it's hard finding a job when they come back because it's like when you go to war, you enter a whole different environment. You have to be aware 24/7. You have to be, you have to watch your back because anything happened. And then you see many humane acts being committed. You see a bunch of violence, and then it's like when you come back, you have to relax. But it's like it's hard for them to adjust because of everything that they've been through. And then 49% say that their current health is um, fair and poor, and those are those who are seriously injured. And then 28% say that they're not as severely injured. And then the government has not given them enough support. We see right there our whole argument is being shown there how the government isn't doing much to support them, and they don't feel supported by the government. And we find that kind of weird because it's like before they go to war, we support them and we give them all our help and our love. And then when they're at war, they go through all this stuff and we may still like support them. But then when they come back, they lose all the support and they come back and we kind of, we pity them. But for others, we may not want them to be a part of our lives. So like, for example, there's those who are looking for jobs and then those who provide them with jobs don't want to provide them that they're insane or they may think that they may do something wrong. And then the military did only fair for a job meeting needs. So as Alana said in the mission statement, they say that they're supposed they're, they're themselves and their family are supposed to be protected, but those needs are needs are not being met. So next we're gonna um, um give you guys two anecdotes that our mentor provided for us. Who, um, about two men that were um, infected by military like, services and stuff. 
So John Harles, um, Charles Hartwick, he was um, he went to war, and so when coming back, he was infected with the bomb. And he, for a solution, he looked for um, suicide. So he committed suicide in 2015, and he ended up leaving his wife and his two daughters. So it kind of just shows us how, like, if the government would have done something like more to help him, um, he could have probably saved his life. The next person is Scotty De La Torre. Um, he was around the age of 28, or he is, well not anymore, but when the incident happened, he was around 28. Um, so he also was affected um, psychologically, and so instead of suicide, he went into alcoholism, and one day he was driving, and he was intoxicated. He hit a car, which hit another car, and inside that car, there was a man, and the car exploded, the man ended up dying. So now he's awaiting trial, and he is being sentenced for life. And uh, like this again, just kind of demonstrates how if the government would have provided even more services, like maybe we could have saved the man's life or he could have been out of that situation. So here are a few pictures that we found that show what we're trying to argue. So like at the start of the war, you see these veterans, they have a good posture, they're standing with confidence, but at the end, there's a lot that they end up, like for this one, he ends up grouchy feeling um, guilty and helpless, and then there's those who end up being homeless because of they're not getting as many help, as much help, and then there's those who end up with PTSD, just like the two men that Adrian discussed. Um, so we've researched and we've seen that there's a, a lot of veterans becoming homeless and how there is a lack of programs. And there are a few programs that the government does provide for veterans, but there's a lot of veterans who are not aware of those programs. And they're not, they feel as if they're not being supported as they should be. So um, we came up with uh, six solutions. So the first one is to um, give them more support. It seems as if like the government can um, be able to like pay off for them to go off to war, but they're not able to pay off their um, them coming back and like providing them with homes or like um, Medicaid or any of those um, type of services. Also, we should make um, cemeteries a little bit more known. Um, I'm sure like only families of these vet of these um, veterans or like soldiers that have passed away only attend these um, cemeteries. Also, we should build more monuments. Recently, I was driving through. An, um, it seemed like a low income area in which there is a a monument, and my first question was. What are these people going to do? Like, they can barely um, provide for themselves. How do we expect for them to be able to, like, do something about this issue? So maybe the government should be able to um, build monuments in higher, like, income areas. Um, we also believe that they should always stay alive. So there's certain soldiers that die at war, and it's if we talk about them and then their whole... The reasons of going to war may come around all of us, and if we talk among each other, you know, how they're not getting as much help, then the government may do something or we may protest. And then there's those veterans who go through the same thing, and there's other veterans who don't know that, and they may think that they're going through the same, whatever they're going through alone. But it's like if we share their stories, then other veterans would know that they're not alone and they could too. And then there's we believe that more programs should be made, so we believe that there's a lack of programs and that the government should provide more programs for their help and not just therapy because they need more than just therapy. And then we also think that a fair would work, so like if a bunch of fairs are conducted around where these veterans can come and sign up to get jobs and if anything, it will be, they'll have more support and they'll find it easier to adapt to and then there's Veterans Day. And Veterans Day is a day, you know, where we take the day to thank the soldiers that go to the war. But it's like, it shouldn't just be one day. It should be every day that we thank them and that we acknowledge everything that they've done for our country. 